But ultimately, it's Jedi Fallen Order's single player narrative that genuinely makes the game stand out. Just in case you're not strong with the Force, as a heads up, this video does contain mild spoilers for Jedi Fallen Order. This is your spoiler warning. A short time ago in a galaxy not so far away, a single player game emerged that would bring balance once again to the video game force. And no, we're not talking about Knights of the Old Republic today. We are talking about Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order and how it has saved Dragon Age 4. <laughs> Across the genre of gaming, there is one type that is the creme de la creme, a piece de la resistance. Another French phrasing meaning good, single player games. Whether it be a huge adventure across the far reaches of space, or perhaps just 12 minutes in time repeated over and over, single player narrative games utilize the interactive property of video games to provide a unique storytelling experience. Great single player games can challenge the way we think, make us laugh, and make us cry over and over and over again. Seriously, the prologue of The Last of Us is literally the first 10 minutes of Up and it gets me every time. Thank you. <laughs> but within the new decade, there has been this overwhelming idea that, well, single player narrative games don't sell. Multiplayer titles, including Warcraft, Fortnite, and GTA Online, offer unique perks with every season and expansions, making them refreshing for the player and continuous cash machines for the companies that publish them. With a single player game, you can add purchasable DLC, outfits, or other perks in the game. I'm looking at you, Oblivion Horse Armor. But once the game is done, players may not find themselves replaying the game over and over again like they would with the multiplayer game. Electronic Arts has been a big perpetrator of this idea. In an infamous tweet by former EA CEO Frank Cabot, Cabo stated, I have not greenlit one game to be developed as a single player experience. Today, all of our games include online applications and digital services that make them live 24-7, 365. This tweet has now since been deleted and rectified by a Kotaku article, but the proof is in the EA pudding. Most first party EA titles feature a multiplayer or online element. Your Battlefields, FIFAs, Sims, etc. Of course, there are always exceptions, namely thanks to the EA Originals program. But today, we're focusing on the impact of one Hallmark game in EA's history, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Fallen Order is a single player narrative game developed by Respawn Entertainment that takes place five years after the Republic has fallen in the Star Wars universe. Most Jedi have been hunted down and killed, but Cal Kestis, a Padawan during Order 66, managed to escape and survive in hiding. However, after accidentally using the Force to save someone's life, he quickly finds himself on the run from Imperial Inquisitors. His adventure takes him across the galaxy, where he uncovers a holocron that includes the final list of all four sensitive children. Throughout the game, Cal develops new skills in addition to Force and lightsaber abilities, as his connection to his Jedi past becomes stronger. It is rewarding to play as Cal Kestis, whether using the Force to pull a rope his way, or using his lightsaber to deflect attacks. Likewise, the simple Metroidvania-esque build of the game makes it feel satisfying to travel between a set of several planets to unlock new areas with each new ability. But ultimately, it's Jedi Fallen Order's single-player narrative that genuinely makes the game stand out. In this current Star Wars renaissance, it feels exhilarating to once again step into the single-player shoes of a Jedi. Watching Cal descend down a rope with Scratch Republic Star Destroyers looming in the background or even coming face to face with Darth Vader are two of the many incredible moments this game has to offer players. So, how did this game save the future of the Dragon Age series? Well, get out your Wayfinder and time manipulating amulets as we journey way back to the year of 2014. 2014, Bioware's Dragon Age Inquisition was released to critical acclaim. Not only did it take home Game of the Year, but it also received the award for Best RPG of the Year. Inquisition was a stunning third addition to this beloved franchise. The award-winning title featured improved combat, customization, a thrilling story, and of course, lots and lots of romanceable NPCs. As a personal request on behalf of the producers, I have been asked to read the following statement. 
Here we go. <clears throat> Dear Bioware, please let us romance Varric. He is incredibly charming, has a mesmerizing voice, and I just want to spend hours romancing this stunning man and his even more stunning chest, and I want to- I want to do what? No. You know what, let's just save the rest of this letter for a different video. So naturally, after the incredible success of Inquisition, Bioware began development on the next Dragon Age title in 2015. Alongside this development, Bioware releases the Trespasser DLC, which offers more story for your Inquisitor and a tease at where the next game would take place. The Tevinter Imperium. It's a big deal if you play Dragon Age. It's like being told that GTA 6 is definitely going to be in Vice City. Meanwhile, another studio, Bioware Vancouver, was hard at work on a different game. The first new Mass Effect in five years, following the finale of the original trilogy. And that game was Mass Effect Andromeda. Andromeda was released in March 2017 to lukewarm reviews. Day one players were frustrated with the wonky animations, in addition to the weak story and gameplay system. And this was supposed to be the significant rebirth and continuation of the Mass Effect series? Well, this in part had to do with the original studio, Bioware Edmonton, not working on the project. No, EA had them hard at work on another spacefaring epic. But before we talk about that venture, there are a few more notable events to hit on our narrative timeline. Mere months after the fall of Mass Effect Andromeda, EA and Bioware decided to reboot the current Dragon Age 4 title and push for long-term monetization. Additionally, November 2017 featured another rough launch for EA, the release of Star Wars Battlefront 2 and Loot Box Again. EA lost a lot of trust with its fans after this monetization move, and while the company did eventually restructure the system, the damage had already been done. EA was not looking good in the eyes of Star Wars fans or Bioware fans, but thanks to the acquisition of Respawn Entertainment within the same month, there was hope on the two suns horizon. Flash forward to December 2018. Bioware is hard at work on Dragon Age 4, and the world is treated to the first teaser at the 2018 Game Awards. A very vague but stunning trailer that ends without a launch date or year, but simply hashtag the Dreadwolf Rises. Sadly, Rising wouldn't be what the Dreadwolf would be doing anytime soon. 2019 started out rough for EA. In January alone, the publisher shut down Project Orca, which was actually adapted from Project Ragtag, another Star Wars title that was scrapped after the closure of Visceral Games in 2017. So there was EA taking out not one, but two Star Wars games within two years of each other, as if they were younglings after the execution of Order 66. Then February hit them with an additional whammy. That Bioware non-Mass Effect space game I was telling you about earlier, it launches. Anthem released to poor praise on February 22nd. The game's repetitive nature in combination with its flat story was the nail in the coffin for another Bioware space property. And you couldn't even romance the NPCs in Anthem! Look, just like I can expect to step into a mysterious sugary substance at a movie theater, so too can Bioware players expect to romance NPCs in their games. Arguably, it's what they're mostly known for. Creating compelling story-driven games and letting you date dinosaur bird aliens. So right now, things are not looking so great for EA, thanks to the lackluster reception of Star Wars Battlefront 2 and the blunders of Anthem and Mass Effect Andromeda. What title could possibly redeem them? Enter Jedi Fallen Order. Respawn's Jedi Fallen Order releases on November 10th, 2019 to critical acclaim. The game provides the perfect balance of challenging gameplay, stunning visuals, and compelling narrative to suit gamers and Star Wars fans alike. It's even got its obligatory droid sidekick, BD-1. Look how cute he is with his little robotic eyes and health stims. BD-1 over Baby Yoda any day. Come at me, internet. Jedi Fallen Order reinvigorated hope and excitement for Star Wars EA titles and single-player narrative games. Multiplayer games can offer fun challenges and three-plus hour-long sessions with friends, but there's nothing that can replace the personal experience of a wonderful story. And Jedi Fallen Order has gained so much love over the last two years that in the official Star Wars poll, of whose lightsaber to add next to the legendary collection, 
Cal Kestis is one. That's right. This video game character's lightsaber beat out Ezra's, Kanan's, Qui-Gon Jinn's, and even Anakin Skywalker's. Anakin freaking Skywalker, man. And this love has had not only an impact on the Star Wars community, but EA itself. Thanks to the combination of Jedi Fallen Order's success and the blunder that was Anthem, EA had a good long think and came to this conclusion. Hey, maybe gamers like single player narrative games and maybe they can be good? In other words, my dudes, water is wet. As of February 2021, EA has canceled a planned improved version of Anthem called Anthem Next and instead put the teams of Bioware at work on Dragon Age 4. And according to Jason Schreier, EA has allowed developers to remove all planned multiplayer components from Dragon Age 4, letting it focus on its single player narrative. And when you look at this timeline of gaming history, it's actually quite fascinating. Respawn, a studio that had predominantly succeeded with multiplayer games, knocks it out of the park with their single player narrative Star Wars title. Meanwhile, Bioware, one of the most beloved storytelling studios, fumbles over a multiplayer game. It just goes to show that you can't judge a book by its cover, or in this case, a release by its developer. And just recently on EA's latest earnings call, not only have they confirmed to invest in more Jedi Fallen Order titles, but Mass Effect as well. Mass Effect Legendary Edition launch reignited passion in the franchise with sales well above expectations. And thanks to the cryptic Mass Effect teaser from the 2020 Game Awards, this definitely isn't the last we've seen of this beloved space franchise. As of right now, Dragon Age 4 has a projected release of 2023. While it may be a bummer that this next installment will have taken roughly 8 years to see the light of day, let's all be thankful that Dragon Age 4 is on track to being the fantastical single player action RPG that it was meant to be. And I will be able to finally extract my revenge against the Eggman! Well, not that Eggman, this Eggman! No, and don't worry, we will definitely be making Adam Sessa review that one. I personally cannot wait to see who he romances. What is one moment from a single player game that has stuck with you? Let us know in the comments down below. And if you're looking for some more gaming deep dives, feel free to watch The Secretish History of Metroid. And hey, when you're done with that, check out our Why Follow 76 is finally worth your time video. And be sure to hit the subscribe button so you can be reminded every time we review new games or release a super spicy take. Oh, you wanted a spicy take? Okay, um, sure. Animal Crossing is fine. It's just fine.